What's happening good people, welcome to the channel, I'm Wes aka Mr Budget Watch and today we are going to be reviewing this uh, depth charge. You can see the model number on screen now because each colourway has their own sort of uh, different number to uh, you know identify them. So obviously you can see I have the green with the red accent. Uh, available in a few different colours from the watch shop. Now they were kind enough to provide this to review, it does not have to go back, hence the paid promotion, uh, but that is not going to change my opinion. Uh, you guys know that by now, I'm always honest in my reviews and if there's any issues with this watch, then you will know. Uh, so uh, if you've never heard of the watch shop before, they're essentially an online retailer, they sell loads of different watches including their own uh, one we have here. They have Hamilton, Seiko's, loads of other choices too. Uh, they also do finance and uh, very, very uh, occasionally they will do uh, discounts as well. Uh, so you can actually get discounts off uh, loads of different uh, of their watches. So all the information you need will be down in the description. So let's uh, get in and talk specifications. So this one is a 41 mil diameter. And if we add the crown, that takes it up to 45 millimeters. Uh, the crown is actually 6.8 millimeters in diameter, so it's a good size crown. Uh, the case thickness is 13.4 millimeters. Uh, lug width is a pretty standard 20 mil, very, very nice to see. Uh, the lug to lug is 47.8, so very nice and wearable. Uh, we also have some taper to this bracelet. So you can see the bracelet is a mix of brushing and high polishing. So we start at 20 at the lugs, we go down to 18 at the bottom, and then back up to 20 mil at the clasp. So it's not a very drastic or dramatic taper, but it does still have some uh, taper to it. Uh, this weighs 156 gram sized up for me and my six inch wrist. Obviously it will weigh more uh, when you actually have all the links included. We have a sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance, and a two year guarantee. So that is uh, really quite impressive. So let's uh, talk about this watch in a little bit more detail. And we're going to start with that bezel first. So you can see this one here is a little bit subby in style. We have a uh, loom pip at the 12 o'clock with a little red triangle. Uh, very, very nice. It's actually uh, the loom pip is uh, protruding from the bezel and then the red triangle is actually cut into the bezel just to give it a little bit of depth and uh, interest. You can see we've got five minute markers all the way around in uh, batons and then we've got uh, numerals at every 10 minute and then we've got minute markers as well. So it's a very, very uh, full-fledged dive time bezel. So that's very, very nice to see. Usually you get markers up to the 15 and then just numbers everywhere else. But you know, depth charge of, you know, watch shop have gone that extra mile and put markers everywhere. So you get a really good comprehensive dive type bezel. Let's take a look at that bezel action. And it is very, very nice. Good clicks. We do have some back play though. But yeah, really, really nice. Good amount of grip on uh, this bezel edge as well. You can just see it's quite a, uh, a nice bezel uh, edge, but the grip is very nice. Everything lines up as it should, but like I said, we do get a bit of pipe, uh, back play. Nice uh, defined clicks, and the movement is smooth. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm liking it, I'm a fan. It's got a really nice and satisfying sound. It is a little bit stiff, I've noticed, so it probably will loosen up, obviously, the more you use it. Uh, the bezel insert is actually uh, ceramic, so very, very nice. Let's move in a little bit on that dial, and we have a uh, just a brushed rehaul. Uh, moving in a little bit more, we've just got a simple, plain, white printed minute track with bolder uh, batons at every 15 minute. Moving in again, we have all applied indices with a little high polished border and they are all applied. So we have a double baton at the 12, single batons uh, every 15 and then every 5 we have regular Circular ones, you can also see there is no date, so no cyclops. Really nice and symmetrical looking dial, which I'm always a fan of. I just think they look so much cleaner than when it's got a date window. 
under those double buttons at the 12, you can see we've got the depth charge logo, which is printed. And then above the six, we have some more printing with the uh, name, Sapphire, and of course the uh, depth rating. Uh, as you can see, obviously the dial is green and it's like a matte finish. So there's no sunburst on it at all. I quite like it. I think it suits the watch quite well. It doesn't sort of shout or, uh, you know, take away much from the rest of the design. Uh, obviously, you know, the different dial colors have, uh, you know, different thingies. So, uh, you know, just pick whichever one you prefer. I do like this green one though. I think it's really nice. Uh, I don't really own many green watches. So it was, uh, when I saw this one in green, I thought, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll give it a go. And I really do like this shade of green that they've used. I think it's very, very nice. Uh, so taking a look at those hands, you can see we've got a really broad arrow style and then a fence post, and then a slim second hand with a little sort of mid-mounted lollipop. All the indices and hands are loom filled as well. I'm not entirely sure on the compound. I couldn't find any information. Also want to note that the hands and indices, the borders are polished. So you can just see it catches the light very, very nicely. So I'm, uh, I'm quite liking the dial. You can see it's got some influences from other watches, but it's definitely not a homage of anything. Quick look at that side profile, you can see, you know, there's not much interest. Just uh, quite plain, high polish. It is a little bit mucky though from handling it. Uh, you can see we've got a little bit of a downturn to those lugs uh, just at the end, and that just helps uh, bring it down and actually wear a little bit smaller than uh, what the size suggests. Uh, moving around to the top of the lugs, you can see they've got a very nice curve profile. If you've seen sub homages, you know that they're a little bit more stout and they're a little bit broader. These are a little bit more elegant and have more of a taper. We have brushing on the top of the lugs, very fine and high quality brushing. Looking at this side, you can see we've got some big crown guards, high polished again, and a signed screw down crown. Uh, the crown actually is one of the nicest I have ever used. Uh, you can just see how easy it is to use, even despite those massive crown guards doing a good job protecting. Uh, so you can see the movement is going, but if I give it a pull out, you can see it does have a ghost date position because of that Seiko NH35. So you have to pull it twice. You can see the second hand does stop and now we are free to adjust the time. But this crown is honestly one of the nicest I have ever felt. And I've had Seikos on the channel and it actually does feel better than the uh, one in the Seiko. Uh, the crown feels planted, the stem feels really nice. There's no great in feeling. It's so smooth, no horrible feedback and it feels so secure and planted. So uh, when you've done with the crown, you know, you just give it a simple push back in and then you just screw it back down. And it really is that easy to use. Uh, as I mentioned already, it's about nearly a seven mil, good amount of grip and texture on it as well. You can just uh, see that in this close up. Very, very easy to use and manipulate. Uh, very, very impressed. The only downside is that ghost tape position, but most people, you know, you just pull it out twice anyway, uh, straight to the time. So you do get used to it after a while. So let's uh, take a look at that case back. So you can see, Nothing too special on this case back. It's just all high polish. And then we have some uh, lightly etched specifications, uh, the uh, branding, and of course it is screw down. Not really anything to write home about here. So I'll uh, move on. Uh, speaking of moving on, let's talk bracelet. So as I mentioned already in the review, we do have a mix of brushing on the outers and a high polish center. I do wish that this was all brushed because uh, you know this polished mid um, center, it does tarnish quite easy. It gets mucky from uh, handling it. And it also picks up really fine micro scratches quite easily. That's not an issue with this watch. That is just high polish surfaces in general. After a while, they are going to start, you know, tarnishing and wearing and picking up scratches. What I will say though, is the bracelet is very, very nice quality. You can just see it's got a good taper to it. We do have solid end links and it's brushed on the inside. We have solid links. You can just see right there. And then there are your push pins that hold it together. Would have been nice for screw links, but you know, push pins, you know, they do the job uh, fine. You can see we do have some micro adjust. I did actually mess up and uh, scratch the side. That is my fault. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was, uh, you know, watching TV while I was uh, adjusting it and, uh, you know, my mistake. But again, that's another reason why I'm not so keen on high polish is because if that was brushed, I could get rid of that, no problem. 
High polish is a little bit trickier to do if you don't have the right equipment. So looking at the uh, clasp, you can see we've got double security pushers, uh, some light branding, brushed finish, and it is a pressed outer shell. Again, we've got those micro, just uh, four of them. Milled clasp, all brushed, very, very nice, good quality. So yeah, I'm uh, quite impressed with the clasp. So while we're talking about the clasp, I just wanted to add another little thing. So uh, someone addressed in the uh, unboxing video that there was a little area of the clasp that needs addressing. And that is the little portion that just sticks out behind the uh, micro adjustment. Now I have been speaking to a rep at Watch Shop and they confirmed that this will be fixed for version 2. So this little bit that sticks out at the end will not be an issue on version 2. That is confirmed and here is the screenshot to show you guys what has been said. So that is really good news uh, for anyone that uh, had an issue with this. I personally don't find it all that um, bothersome but you know if you do it will be fixed on version 2. So yeah good, uh, good quality. Bracelet, nice articulation in between the links really solid feeling and well put together bracelet it's well finished and uh, you know we're going to talk actually uh, comfort now while we're talking about the bracelet and you know what it is a very very comfortable watch to wear uh, like i mentioned already this bracelet's got some nice articulation and i'm just going to show you how it wears on my wrist right now right guys so here it is on my six inch wrist and you know what i think this is absolutely perfect for me sub 48 mil lug to lug 41 mil diameter if it was 40 uh, it'd probably be a little bit better but i think this is just an absolutely perfect fit uh, we're not getting any lug overhang i don't think the diameter is all that big uh, obviously because a lot of that is made up by bezel and it's not all dial so it actually looks smaller on your wrist than the size would suggest i would say you know six inch wrist if you're like me you know you'll be absolutely fine six and a half even better seven inch you know, I'm saying uh, it's still going to look nice as well. Very, very nice profile as well. You can see we do have a little bit of a gap because I have a uh, quite a flat top wrist. But you do see those lugs come down really nicely and help bring that uh, bracelet down. And because we've got no male end links, we don't get any protrusion from the uh, end link. So yeah, very, very nice and comfortable wearing watch. As I mentioned already, you know, that bracelet does have some nice articulation, conforms really nicely to the wrist because of that, because the bracelet's not rigid and stiff, it really conforms nicely. Moving on to the clasp, you can see, you know, it fits perfectly. It's not one of those really long Rolex style ones uh, that do wear a little bit big on slim wrists. So, you know, this will fit you guys, like I said, with uh, slim wrists uh, like myself. Obviously, I've removed all the links, so if you've got a smaller wrist than me and you like the watch, then you're probably going to have to, uh, you know, swap out the bracelet. Even, uh, you know, just in the micro adjusts, uh, it's probably still going to be a little bit on the big side, unfortunately. So, yes, um, this one is definitely for six inch and above. Uh, but, yeah, most people have six inch uh, wrist and above anyway, so, uh, you know, that's all right there. But, yes, very, very comfortable watch, and the weight is not actually that bothersome either. It's definitely not like a super thick, heavy watch. Uh, it's nicely balanced, you know, there's a lot of weight in the bracelet as well uh, So it just feels really nice. It's not top heavy, you know, it's uh, not wearing it too high So yes, I am very very impressed with how this conforms to the wrist and it's probably one of the most comfortable I'm actually gonna say probably the most comfortable of this style I've ever uh, reviewed so far so yeah, very, very impressed. Now let's uh, move on and talk loom. Right guys, so as we mentioned, this watch does have loom. Again, I'm not entirely sure on the compound. It's green, so that could mean that it's C3. Don't quote me on that though. Uh, if I can find out before the review goes live, I'll pop it on screen. Uh, but yeah, it could potentially be C3. I'm not entirely sure. What I can say for sure though, is it's actually impressive loom. Um, the compound, whatever it is, whatever they're using, is really good. It gets bright. Uh, the hands and indices are quite well balanced, I've noticed as well. So not one is like really bright compared to the other. So I think they've struck a nice balance there. Because sometimes, you know, on dive watches, you get really bright hands and then the indices aren't very good. Or other times the indices are really bright, but the hands aren't very good. I think this one strikes a very, very nice balance. Uh, as for stain power, you know, it does last a fair amount of time. It's definitely not going to be competing uh, with the best in the business. So, you know, you know your Seikos and 
stuff like that but it is very impressive in its own right so i am impressed uh, from this to say it's their first attempt at a watch do you know what i am impressed with the quality of the loom so now let's talk that movement and uh, this one you know is using a seiko nh35 you've seen the specs you've seen these time and time again i can't really add any more to that all i can say is this example is working perfectly fine keeping time fine so yeah i'm not really going to waffle on about a movement that we all know about already specs are on screen uh, if you don't want to do the research but yeah it's a reliable robust movement a bit boring uh you know but it just gets the job done uh, so final thoughts what do i think of this first attempt from watch shop do you know what I am very, very impressed. I mean, we do have one QC issue that I can tell, and that is just a bit of backplate on the bezel. And I think that is very, very impressive. I mean, compared to some uh, Seiko watches that have quite a few QC issues uh, that I've seen and uh, doing research, this one is very, very limited on how many quality control problems it has. It just has that one that I've noticed with the uh, slightly, uh, you know, bezel that does backplay a little bit. But that is it. And I think that is not a deal breaking thing whatsoever. So uh, current price is on screen now because they're, you know, they're forever changing. Uh, but is it worth its retail? So I think these go for around £170. I would say, do you know what? That is a very fair price. It's got good loom. It's well made. It's really comfortable. Got that NH35, which is really good. Good quality loom. Good finishing. Good build. No QC issues, really. Uh, so yeah, I say it's worth that. If you actually use the 30% off code that's currently available at the time of filming, I don't know if it will be uh, when this goes live, uh, I'll update in uh, the description. Uh, that brings it down to around £120 and I would say yes, it is an absolutely fantastic watch if you can get it for that. Even at £170, I would say, do you know what, it is still a very, very good watch for that price. But obviously, if you keep an eye out, uh, wait for those discount codes, you know, you might end up copying one for, you know, around £115, £120. Then it is an absolutely cracking buy at that price. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think of this watch down in the comments. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. And of course, follow me on social media at Mr. Budget Watch. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.